My proudest achievement was to the field of linguistics. My contribution there was to introduce this like class of models to properly uh, analyze the, the data collected and that was well received at the conferences, like we published a book chapter and uh, I think it was very impactful to the, the field of linguistics and as a statistician I value a lot to kind of have impact on applied fields. I'm really proud when graduate students graduate or undergraduates graduate or when they get that aha moment, especially when it's their work that's led them to that. I mean my most exciting moment was probably the first time I sequenced DNA and I got a sequence of something that nobody else had ever seen. Every time we learn something new is a proud moment. Being offered uh, a faculty position here was, was definitely at the top of my my uh, proudest moments uh, list. I still remember yeah, getting the phone call that I was being offered the job, and I was asked to edit two volumes on lampreys, my study organism for Springer's Fish and Fishery series. Starting from growing up during the Civil War in Lebanon to pursuing a career in physics, going from a very warm country to Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> to another extreme where I did my PhD, then landing a fellowship at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Two years later, I found myself here, jump-starting an astrophysics program. And now I have a, a, a large team that I'm very proud of, some 13 people. And for us, we are a diverse team uh, and we're part of the LIGO scientific collaboration. So it's the whole journey that I'm proud of. I think my proudest achievement in science would be my students, my research lab. I have established a very nice research lab, which is very collegial, uh, very diversified and very inclusive. And we all work together to solve a common goal of a problem. I'm very humbled by and honored by when I was selected for the student teacher recognition. This recognition is given to teachers, I believe, selected by the student who considers them as inspired them or contributed to their education. I think that the main thing is like, yeah, women to be more in the decision-making procedures. I think that's another important aspect that uh, at the administration level, like many things need to be transparent. Try to remove personal biases, like as much as possible, have representation of different groups within the hiring committees. Uh, I think that's also quite important. Make being someone in STEM compatible with having a family so that it's not a choice one way or the other. I think if that just becomes more part of the normal thing, women have children and they can continue or if at that critical sort of point um, it's easy to have a family and continue. One of the things that's really critical is to have women represented in, in science. It really was hard to imagine this as a job for me when you, you don't see anybody like me doing it. So that's definitely a, a, a big thing that has improved now considerably. Um, this sort of thing where um, young women get a better sense of what it's like having a career in, in, in science and just recognizing that it's a viable and an exciting career option. I think the faculty and the university acknowledge that there is underrepresentation of women in science, I would say particularly in the discipline of physics. And um, it's now part of our strategic plan, so they are working towards addressing these issues. One important thing for women in science, particularly um, as we go up the ladder and hit that glass ceiling or concrete ceiling, that the university can really provide some mentorship, support, and opportunities for leadership. It's not just the Faculty of Science. I think it takes more than just the science faculty. I think it starts from home, and then it starts into high school, and then maybe it starts into university level. So maybe if you can start at a very young age when they come into the university and show them there is just more than just programming here, and there's more to computer science than that, and then sort of build them up a little bit and teach courses like I do right now. I think they have many choices, but we hope that they will find the choice that they like and hopefully they'll come to computer science. So that's what I think. Thank you. Thank you.